When I was about 16 years old, I read a book. It was a very interesting book. The name of the book was Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And fascinating book. And since then, I fell in love with the concept of a motorcycle. Now, in life, there is what I would say two different types of people. There are more than that, but mainly two different types of people. There are the people who drive cars. Of course, there are those who would swear by public transportation, but we're not going to talk about them now. There are people who drive cars, and very few people, even if you look at society, they would actually drive a motorcycle. And what's, what's the main difference between the two? Between the two is the difference is like, those who drive cars are usually the ones who try to play it safe. You're protected from the, animal, from the elements, you're driving safe, it's, you, you have AC, you have this, you have that, and so on and so forth. Well, what about driving a motorcycle? Why is a motorcycle so different? Well, as you think about it, you have this beast, let's say you're driving a heart, you know, so you're driving a Harley, right? They're like, I don't know, 30 inches from the, from the, from the ground, Driving with 80 wild horses right underneath you, you're sitting on a seat that is maybe 10 inches, leather seat is 10 inches wide, going at this speed, you know, coming to a curve, uh, uh, you know, turning the road and, 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 you know, coming it fast and then you lean into it and then you know what you do, you actually squeeze the throttle, you give it more power and you get out of it and you drive. It's an amazing feeling to ride a motorcycle. And so is to life. Most people, they're going to come into a, a, into a curve, into, into the road, they're not going to lean into it. When difficulties comes into your life, do you lean into it, do you get more power, or you try to run away? You put the AC on, you put your windshield wipers. Driving, for example, in a motorcycle, you need to understand that you need to have a small reflector, because otherwise it's like, you being hit by, by gale forces, you know, you're driving on a, on a bike, it's like 80, 100 miles an hour, wind coming, attacking you all the time, you know, it takes a toll on your body, and yet you're able to put a tremendous smile on your face driving that bike. What are you? Are you a motorcycle person? Or are you a public transportation F train you know, would stop at the uh, next stop at the, uh, you know, whatever really it is, you know, it's like nowhere, basically. Something yeah, you know, too. you want to look at most people's life, you know, how they live their life? Not, not a problem. <clears throat> Go look at a subway. Smelly, dirty, full of rats. Do I need to describe to you the, the F train or the E train on the rush hour? This is how most people are and most people... Did you actually see happy people on the subway? I've never seen a happy person on the subway. Everybody's depressed. Everybody's a lunatic. That's how we are in our lives. There's some, uh, somebody nice, you know, who will put in big noise in his own car and an AC, but it's still not a motorcycle. And that's an analogy of life. I'm, just, I'm not advocating for people now go get bikes. I'm talking about a mindset. We hide too much behind things, you know, we, we hide behind masks all the time and it's something along the path of the journey of our life, our mask becomes so heavy that we cannot even tolerate the burden anymore. We can, we are afraid to, to look at life and actually enjoy it. We're afraid to go on this motorcycle and squeeze the throttle down. To enjoy life, to feel the boost, to feel that you're alive. We're afraid to feel that we're alive, and that's so sad to me. Somebody once says, in order to really be who you are, or, no, I'm sorry, who really, if you want to really be who you want to be, you have to abandon who you are right now, because what you are right now is just a facade for some kind of an imaginary thing that you put on yourself. And you realize that at the end of the day, you don't need to ask permission for people to live your life. But you do need to want to live life itself. 
re going to retirement and doing a living this like uh, the Dulce Vita, that's not life. That's not it. You need to stop and really evaluate your life. Is your life, again, worth living? Do you have anything that is meaningful in your life? Even something so precious as Torah, are you really doing it the right way? Are you excited? Is this learning a new sugiya for you? Is this like as exciting as like leaning your bike and going at like, I don't know, 60 miles an hour and then squeezing the throttle out, inches from the floor, going at this massive speed? Yes, you can have a leather jacket. But do you understand what I'm saying? Do you enjoy it? Is that the thrill? Are you thrilled about anything that it's, that it's or is just something that you only thrill about profanities and nonsense? One of the reasons you can't, you don't have this joy in life is because you're not thrilled about anything, because you always worry about what this would say, what but who would say, and you're living somebody else's life. You don't live your own life. You want to play it safe. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. Do you have dreams? Not fantasies, dreams. And I'm going to tell you something that might, you might not like it. Most men die at the age of 25. But it's until 75, 80, they actually being buried. When you give up all your dreams, and around the age of 25, when the pressure comes that you have to get married, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do that. Okay, how are you going to do this? Okay, let's, let's do what everybody else does. Let, let's kill our dreams. At that point, you cease to exist. At, at that point, you're dead. At that point, you don't have the thrill of life anymore. You're not happy to look into life. How in the world do you think that you're going to dare to call yourself Eved Hashem if you don't have the simcha, the joy? You don't. You don't have simcha in your life. And you're going to tell me that you are Eved It says, if do it Hashem the simcha. Even then, at that point, the mitzvah, the mitzvah become a burden on you. Becomes heavy on you. And that is because you don't have joy in your life. Because you were willing to give up on your own dreams. And that's something you need to look into. Everybody is rushing to get married, get married, get married. You know, it's a joke. You know what they said. It takes six men to bring a, pe a person down to the grave. It takes only one woman to bring him there. You know, to lower a person to the grave, you need six men. But the, we got there is because it was rushing to get married. Yes, it's a joke. But where are you rushing? Where are you rushing? Did you enhance yourself? Do you know what you want in a wife? Do you know who you are? Because if you don't know who you are, how are you going to find yourself the right wife? You're not. And that's when the pressure starts and then when the stress starts. And then you wonder why all of a sudden you don't feel connected to Hashem. You don't feel connected to God anymore. You don't feel connected to the Torah anymore. Why don't you feel it? Because there's no joy and thrill of discovering and finding out. There's no simcha in your actions. And that's very bad. As far as I'm concerned, you should not live another day like this. Change it. Change it today. Have a great day.